Statues are a big part of our societal history and culture, and a lot of them are also strikingly beautiful. For today's video, we thought we'd take a look at 15 of the most amazing statues. Number 15. Expansion by Paige Bradley This stunning statue is created using bronze, electricity, and mixed media, and you can see it for yourself if you take a trip to London. Depicting a woman meditating in the lotus position, it was created by taking a wax sculpture and dropping it onto the floor. Each of the pieces was then cast in bronze and assembled so that they float apart from each other. The statue's creator, artist Paige Bradley, said, quote, If we disconnected and severed our attachments, would we shatter our confinements and expand beyond our shell? Would the world look different? Would we recognize ourselves? This is the irony of containment. As long as we don't push on the walls of our surroundings, we may never know how strong we really are." End quote. Bradley came up with the idea after moving to Manhattan and learning that there was a movement within the art world towards fewer figures. She said that many figurative sculptors had started teaching because there was little interest in figure sculptures in museums and galleries. One of the most interesting things about this piece is that it's an example of a Western take on Japanese kintsukuroi, also called kintsugi. It's the art of repairing broken pottery by using lacquer dusted with powdered metals. The idea is to make the breakage and repair part of the object's history, and you could argue that Bradley did the same thing here, but with the use of electricity. Number 14. Sinking Building by Petrus Spronk the State Library in Melbourne, Australia was already a historical landmark before this statue was ever commissioned. The creation of this just gave people another great reason to visit. All the statue consists of is the top corner of a building poking out of the ground, and it was commissioned by the city as part of an art program. The fate of this library reminds us of a line in Arthur Miller's play The Crucible, which is about the Salem witch trials. At one point, the character exclaims that a box of books is heavy, and they're told that it's because of the weight of the knowledge that's contained within them. One of the interesting things about this piece is that it ties in with an urban legend that's been told at library campuses around the world. In the original story, the library collapsed under the weight of the knowledge. There are other variants, like Jim sinking because of the weight of the water in the pools. This stunning sculpture was created by Petrus Spronk, and it's one of the city's many tourist attractions. It was installed on Swanton Street in January of 1993, and it's said to symbolize the downfall of civilization. Number 13. God of War Statue by Han Meilin This is an epic statue of Guan Yu, an iconic general from Chinese history who was turned into a deity after his death. You don't see many bigger statues than this, and they certainly don't come any heavier. Guan Yu weighs in at over 1,300 tons. We're talking the weight of nearly six fully loaded Boeing 747s. Located in Guan Yu Park in Jingzhou, the huge statue looms out above the water and dwarfs its surroundings, towering above many of the city's buildings. It's around 190 feet tall, and it's built from over 4,000 strips of bronze. Guan Yu was known for carrying an iconic weapon called the Green Dragon Crescent Blade, and a 136-ton version of it is included as part of his statue. Don't make the mistake of thinking of him as only a warrior, though. He's also known for brotherhood, loyalty, and a whole range of other more positive personality traits. The statue is the brainchild of Chinese artist Han Mei Lin, who was also known for designing the mascots of the 2008 Beijing Olympics. As you can imagine, the sheer size of this thing means that there's also plenty of room inside it, which is why they were able to squeeze in an 8,000 square meter museum into the interior of the statue. Number 12. Les Voyageurs by Bruno Catalano These statues are located in the French city of Marseille and were created to celebrate its recognition as the European capital of culture. Built in 2013, Les Voyageurs consists of 10 life-size bronze sculptures that can be found on the Marseille waterfront. The title translates into English as The Travelers. They show a series of people with big chunks of their bodies missing, but rather than being gory or disturbing, it's somehow beautiful. Catalano was born to a Sicilian family in Morocco and moved to France, becoming a sailor before following his passions to turn to art. Much of his art, Les Voyageurs included, is inspired by the time that he spent traveling. It explores the themes of migration and undertaking a journey, with every statue carrying a suitcase that simultaneously weighs them down and offers them support. The huge gaps in the sculptures allow the viewer to complete the artwork with their own imagination. Number 11. Popped Up by Irvin Laurent Hervé 
This huge work of art is made from polystyrene and is currently on public display in Budapest, Hungary. It's set against the backdrop of the Four Seasons Grensham Palace Hotel and was created by noticed artist Erwin Lorenz Herve, who already has a strong reputation for creating challenging pieces of art. Popped Up can be found right beside the Danube River. It was a featured sculpture back in 2014 at the Budapest Art Market, for obvious reasons. It really looks as though the statue is lifting up the grass to poke its head out from beneath the earth. If you're planning on visiting this incredible work of art, you'll want to stop by at night, because that's when it looks its best. It's not that there's anything wrong with it in the daytime, it's just that it's somehow even more striking in the darkness. Better yet, try to see it in both daytime and night. Number 10. Diminish and Ascend by David McCracken There's a lady who's sure that all that glitters is gold, and she's buying a stairway to heaven. But for the rest of us, we'll have to settle for this incredible piece of artwork by David McCracken. Located in Bondi, Australia, this stunning sculpture makes use of perspective to create an ascending staircase that looks as though it reaches all the way up into the heavens. Don't try to climb it, though, because you'll find the steps getting smaller and smaller until you can't climb any higher. The structure itself is made from welded aluminum and was launched at Sydney's Sculpture by the Sea Exhibition. After publicly being unveiled at the world-famous Bondi Beach, it was later moved to Christchurch's Botanic Gardens. McCracken has explained that the idea came about during, quote, a conversation about a performance piece depicting a ladder that required the protagonist to grow smaller and smaller in order to ascend, a kind of Lewis Carroll device that we talked about achieving with shadow puppetry or projection, end quote. Even though he didn't quite achieve his original vision, he still created a hell of a piece of art. Number 9. Nelson Mandela Statue by Marco Cianfinelli This is another stunning piece that plays with perspective, in that it doesn't actually look like anything unless you're looking at it from the right place. It's super clever and a great example of a piece of art that can make you think. Created by South African artist Marco Cianfinelli, a busy guy who's worked on a variety of projects ranging from art and architecture to installations in public spaces. He uses a range of different data-driven approaches to create clever, computer-generated artwork. This one is a physical sculpture rather than a computer-generated piece, but the odds are pretty high that a computer was required for the design process. But who cares when the results are as cool as they are? This is a statue of Nelson Mandela, designed due to the 50th anniversary of his capture by South African police in 1962. The statue is 9 meters tall at its highest point and consists of 27 columns, which represent the 27 years that Mandela spent behind bars. Number 8. Colossus by Giambologna This incredible statue was built in Florence, and it's so large that it's more of a geographical feature than a statue. Created by famous sculpture Giambologna, it was introduced to the world at the end of the 16th century and was designed to symbolize Italy's Apennine Mountains. In fact, it does depict a mountain god called Apennino, and it's also home to a big secret. Its sheer size means that it's also able to house a number of interior rooms, each of which is dedicated to the functionality of the Colossus. For example, one of them is used to channel water from an underground stream through the monster that the Colossus is holding. The Colossus is over 35 feet tall and towers over Tuscany's Villa di Pratolino, so be sure to check it out if you're in the area. If you're lucky and if the rumors are true, then you might even see smoke coming from its nostrils due to a fireplace in another one of those rooms. If you want to visit this statue, you'll need to visit Villa Demidov, the park that it's based in. It's definitely worth a visit if you're in the area. Number 7. Salmon Sculpture by Keith Jellum Nothing quite says Portland, Oregon like this stunning salmon sculpture, which depicts a salmon sticking out of the wall of a building. It's surprisingly realistic once you get over the fact that it's dozens of times bigger than any salmon that's found in nature. The statue is hand-forged in bronze by a local Oregonian sculptor, and it's just over 10 feet in length. Despite being this big, a lot of tourists overlook it because it's up on the third floor of the building, and so if you don't look up, then you can easily walk straight past this fishy masterpiece without even seeing it. As for where to find it, just follow the smell of salmon. It's sticking out of South Park Seafood Restaurant on the northwest corner of the Southwest Salmon Street. And so even though the statue itself isn't made of fish, it's surrounded by the stuff. Is anybody else hungry? Number 6. Metal Morphosis by David Cerny Located at the Whitehall Technology Park in Charlotte, North Carolina, this 25-foot sculpture is made out of stainless steel and can be found at the American Asset Corporation's headquarters. But don't worry though, you don't need to be an employee there to see it. 
Creator David Cerny was born in Prague in the Czech Republic, and Metamorphosis was his first permanent public installation in the United States. Cerny explained, quote, I was thinking about doing something as a centerpiece. I knew I wanted to employ water from the beginning, end quote. Mission accomplished then, David. The statue weighs 13 tons and stands 7 meters tall and shows a metallic human head that's situated in a reflective pool. That brings in the water element, although the original design was supposed to spout water from the mouth. Metamorphosis was first introduced to the world in 2007, and it's made from 40 layers of stainless steel that can revolve and rotate. A similar sculpture of the head of surrealist writer Franz Kafka can be found in the Czech capital of Prague. Number 5. Wursa by Daniel Furman Wursa first came to public attention in 2008 when it was first displayed at the Fontainebleau Castle in Paris. Designed by Daniel Furman, this incredible statue shows an elephant balancing on its trunk. It's not actually possible, of course, on the ground at least. The artist says that 11,000 miles above the Earth, the gravity would be weak enough for it to happen. In fact, Furman worked with a number of specialists to make sure the sculpture is the best it could possibly be. This includes consulting a taxidermist so he could make sure that the elephant was realistic, or as realistic as an elephant balancing on its trunk can be. Furman's work is characterized by taking everyday ideas and elements and putting them into unusual situations. Wursa itself is notable for characterizing both lightness and weight and representing an equilibrium. Number 4. Divarkapun by Tom Franzen This entertaining statue has a name that translates into Channel Rascal, and it's a former nickname from people who come from the Brussels suburb of saint jean molenbeek That's also where the statue is. As for the statue itself, it shows a policeman being tripped up by a guy climbing out of a manhole, and it was first released to the public back in 1985. This permanent piece of street art has reminded a lot of people of Banksy's work, but it was created over 20 years before Banksy hit the mainstream. Said to represent the idea of the common man overthrowing authority, it was created by a Brussels-based sculptor called Tom Franzen. It's said to be inspired by a cartoonist named Herga, who was mostly known for creating Tintin, and despite being nearly 40 years old, it's still a major draw for tourists. Perhaps because of its anti-authoritarian message is just as relevant now as it was when it was first created. Number 3. Kelpies, Grangemouth Arguably Scotland's most iconic statue and one of the most well-known in the whole of the United Kingdom, these 30-meter-tall Kelpies set the backdrop of Grangemouth's historic Forth and Clyde Canal. As you can imagine, with that much height to them, the Kelpies are the world's largest pair of equine sculptures, and they sit at the heart of the Helix Project. The goal of this project was to create a major tourist attraction, blending together Parkland and a visitor hub through a massive 43 million pound investment. That's the equivalent to around 57 million dollars. These statues were inspired by the horses that were historically in use on the canal to pull boats along the towpaths. Horses have always played an important role in the area, and Grangemouth wouldn't be the place it is today without them. Kelpies themselves are mythical water horses that were said to have the strength of 10 regular horses and the ability to transform their shape. Don't expect the statue to transmogrify anytime soon, though. Number 2. Mihai Emanescu by Oscar Hahn This incredible sculpture only works when viewed from a certain angle, but when you get that angle just right, it's absolutely stunning. These photos speak for themselves. Located in Romania, this statue depicts Mihai Emanescu and overlooks the seafront, a deliberate choice that's informed by one of Emanescu's poems, which goes, quote, I have one desire, in the silence of the night, let me die at the edge of the sea. Sculptor Oscar Hahn created this masterpiece back in the 1930s. What's interesting about this statue is that we can thank a guy called I.N. Roman for it. Roman was a lawyer, writer, and the mayor of Constanta, and he knew Emanescu personally. He raised funds for the statue and then unfortunately passed away the year before it was unveiled. That's bad news for Roman, but good news for the rest of us, as we can still go see the statue now, even a hundred years later. It's definitely one to add to your bucket list. Number 1. The Motherland Calls by Yegevni Vucetic and Nikolai Nikitin this incredible statue is one of the tallest in the world and is part of a memorial to Stalingrad on Mameyev Hill, where part of the battle was fought. Stalingrad was named a Soviet hero city in 1945. Construction began in 1959 and it was completed in 1967. 
The Motherland Calls is the headline act at the memorial, a 172-foot tall statue depicting a winged woman with a sword in her hand that stretches 280 feet into the sky. It's built in a style called socialist realism. At completion, it was the tallest statue in the world, and even today, it's the tallest outside of Asia and the tallest statue of a woman. It represents the Soviet motherland and is designed to inspire Soviet citizens to fight against its enemy. It's believed that the figure is based upon Nina Dumdats, a famous discus thrower, while the face is said to be based upon Vucicek's wife, Vera. It weighs an insane 8,000 tons and consists of 5,500 tons of concrete and 2,400 tons of metal. The sword alone weighs 14 tons. Imagine trying to wield that.